enzymes speed up chemical reactions. Many of them are regulated. They can increase or decrease the activities on binding activator or inhibitor. In this video, we are going to be talking about enzyme inhibitors, molecules that can bind an enzyme and lower its activity. There are two groups of inhibitors, reversible and irreversible. Reversible inhibitors are loosely bound to the enzymes and can dissociate, and in this case, enzyme activity can be restored. Irreversible are tightly bound. In this video, we are going to focus on reversible inhibition. Irreversible one is considered in the second video. There are four general types of reversible inhibition, competitive, uncompetitive, mixed, and non-competitive. First, competitive inhibition. Competitive inhibitors compete with substrates for the active sites of enzymes. They resemble the substrate molecules and fit in the active sites, so we have got no room for the substrate to bind. Recall that the rate of enzyme catalyzed reactions depends on the interaction between enzyme and its substrate and the formation of the enzyme substrate complex. Competitive inhibitors diminish the rate of catalysis by reducing the proportion of enzyme molecules bound to substrate molecules. The health mark of competitive inhibition is that it can be overcome by a sufficiently high substrate concentration. If you add more substrate, it becomes more competitive, namely the substrate displays the inhibitor. On the michaelis menten plot, you can see that if we increase the concentration of substrate, the curve can reach the maximum. However, you can also see that we need more substrate to reach the same value of the maximum. It also means that Michaelis constant gets higher. Recall that it is equal to the substrate concentration when the velocity of chemical reaction reach half of the maximum. So we need more substrate to reach the maximum and correspondingly we need more substrate to reach half of the maximum in the presence of competitive inhibitors. And the measured Michaelis constant seems to be elevated on the plot. Let's have a look at the classical michaelis menten equation. Recall the michaelis menten equation relates initial velocities of enzyme catalyzed reactions and substrate concentrations, provided enzyme concentration is constant. The equation also describes such plots, these hyperbolas. This increase, Michaelis constant, is called apparent Michaelis constant. The increase is often described as a factor alpha, so we can rewrite Michaelis menten equation for competitive inhibition like this. The apparent increase in Michaelis constant depends on how strongly the competitive inhibitor binds its substrate. On the double reciprocal Van Weaverberg plot, uh, which is described by algebraically transformed Michaelis menten equation, we can see that adding inhibitor increases the slope of the curve but doesn't change the intercept with y axis. The intercept represents one divided by the maximal, which does not change, and the intercept with x axis represents minus one divided by Michaelis constant. You can see that the intercept changes and the value of Michaelis constant increases. Competitive inhibitors are commonly used as drugs. Ibuprofen and paracetamol are competitive inhibitors of enzymes cyclooxygenases that participate in prostaglandin biosynthesis. Thus, the drug reduces pain and inflammation. Statins are drugs that reduce high cholesterol levels by competitively inhibiting a K enzyme in cholesterol biosynthesis, hydroxymethylglutaryl conzip A reductase. Methotrexate is an especially potent competitive inhibitor of the enzyme dehydrofolate reductase, which plays a role in the biosynthesis of pyrimidine nucleotides. Methotrexate is a structural analog of dehydrofolate, which is a normal substrate. The drug inhibits nucleotide synthesis and is used to treat cancer. Next type of inhibition is uncompetitive. An uncompetitive inhibitor binds at a site distant from the substrate active site and unlike a competitive inhibitor binds only to the enzyme substrate complex and forms the enzyme substrate inhibitor complex. The enzyme substrate inhibitor complex doesn't go on to form any product. The binding site for uh, an uncompetitive inhibitor is created only on interaction of the enzyme and substrate. 
uncompetitive inhibition cannot be reversed by increasing substrate concentration. Interestingly, it works best when a substrate concentration is high because the high substrate concentration produce more uh, enzyme substrate complexes, which then instantly bind to uncompetitive inhibitors to form uh, enzyme substrate inhibitor complexes. The complexes cannot be converted into product and free enzyme. Thus, the concentration of enzyme substrate complexes decrease, which results in lowered velocity. Recall that uh, velocity depends on um, enzyme substrate complex concentration. On the Michaelis Menten plot, you can see that uncompetitive inhibitors decrease the maximal and decrease the upper end Michaelis constant because less substrate is needed to reach the half of the reduced the maximal. The velocity of the inhibited reaction decreased by the factor alpha prime. The factor reflects how strongly the uncompetitive inhibitor binds enzyme substrate complex. Michaelis Menten equation taking into account the factor looks like this. On the Lanvier Berg plot, you may see that the presence of uncompetitive inhibitor produce parallel lines. The intercept with y axis increase, indicating lower it the maximal. The intercept with x axis decrease, showing that upper and Michaelis constant is uh, reduced. Tertiary amines are uncompetitive inhibitors of acetylcholine esterase. The herbicide glyphosate, also known as Roundup is a non-competitive inhibitor of an enzyme in the bisynthetic phosphate for aromatic amino acids. The third type of inhibition is mixed. A mixed inhibitor also binds at the site distant from the substrate active site, but it binds to either free enzyme or enzyme substrate complex. The equation describing mixed inhibition is shown on the slide. This is how it looks on the lanvier Berg plot. The maximal is affected because the inhibitor renders some fraction of the available enzyme molecules inactive, lowering the effective enzyme concentration on which the maximal depends on. The michaelis menten constant may increase or decrease depending on whether the inhibitor binds more strongly to free enzyme or to enzyme substrate complex. Correspondingly, the intersection of the lines can be above or below the x-axis. The body actually is reflected in the alpha and alpha prime factors. Calicreens are enzymes uh, which cleave peptide bonds of some proteins that belong to certain signaling pathways. Fukugitin is a type of plant bioflavonoid that acts as a mixed inhibitor of calicreens. It decreases the maximal and increases the Michaelis constant for calicreens. Inhibition of calicreens is possible therapy for metastatic cancer. If an inhibitor binds to free enzyme and to the enzyme substrate complex with equal easy, we deal with a special type of mixed inhibition called non-competitive. The alpha and alpha prime are equal. Have a look at, uh, at the Michaelis Menten plot. You can see that the amount of substrate necessary to reach health of the maximum is the same with and without inhibition. This means that the type of inhibition doesn't change the Michaelis constant. On the lanvier Berg plot, we have the slope of the curve and the intercept with y-axis increased, which tells us about lower at the maximal, but the intercept with x-axis is the same. So uh, the Michaelis constant uh, is not changed. Doxycycline, an antibiotic, functions as a non-competitive inhibitor of a proteolytic enzyme collagenase. It is used to treat periodontal disease. Lead can act as a non-competitive inhibitor of many enzymes. It re reacts with the crucial sulfahydryl groups. The reactivity doesn't depend significantly on whether the enzyme is free or is a part of enzyme substrate complex. See the info concerning irreversible inhibition in my next video. Thank you for your attention.